Big announcement for MetaMask this week focused on enhancing security for wallet users. Now, yesterday, MetaMask introduced the integration of privacy preserving security alerts for extension and mobile app users with the goal of driving wider adoption. So now all self-custodial wallet users around the world will automatically receive alerts about potentially malicious transactions. An important development, especially because according to Chainalysis, crypto users around the world had $1.7 billion stolen, hacked, or fished last year alone. Can you break down how this new feature works exactly and elaborate on the goal of this development? Yes, of course. Um, as you said, there's a huge risk within this space in terms of scams uh, and people essentially losing money within the self-custodial space. And so there's a lot of work that we've been needing to do in terms of protecting our users. We had a few different methods in place already, but of course, there's no one solution that is the silver bullet. And so what's really important is we're working with a specialist in the space to make sure that we are adding that protection. And so there's a series of steps that each of these different providers that we're working with are leveraging as a means to go and determine which of these uh, applications or smart contracts are potentially malicious. And then we are able to alert our users before they actually go and make a transaction that could potentially put their assets at risk. And so what's great is of course, one of our core principles is making sure that we are doing this in as privacy preserving as possible and so we're not sending any data externally to any of these third party providers, but we're leveraging the data that they provide to us to be front and center for those users as they're making those transactions. So happy to go through a little bit more detail in terms of what they're doing. But of course, some of that detail we try to uh, keep to ourselves so that we can keep the scammers guessing in terms of what we're actually doing to protect those users. And that makes perfect sense. But MetaMask estimates that this year alone, these security alerts will prevent hundreds of millions worth of dollar assets from being stolen. I read that a common tactic used by hackers is creating fake browser extensions that try to steal private keys when installed on devices, and that these malicious extensions often imitate popular crypto wallet extensions like MetaMask in an effort to trick users into giving up their private keys. So. Was this part of the reason you felt this new security feature was absolutely necessary? I think this was one of the reasons for sure. What we've actually seen is a lot of uh, the malicious intent comes from individuals interacting with malicious uh, applications themselves. And so we see about uh, of all the new applications or what we call decentralized applications, dApps that get released, about 10% of them are malicious. And so the bulk of users are going in, in this permissionless ecosystem, interacting with them, and we wanna just provide more protection to them at that state. There are, of course, a bunch of different ways that people are trying to scam individuals, whether it's uh, fake websites or fake extensions. And a big thing here is to always double check the URL that you're going for, and we will not ask you for your secret recovery phrase uh, that's associated with that. So really make sure that you're protecting that at all costs. And so we've made a series of different steps of making sure that the user understands what it means to open up and show that secret recovery phase. And then now, of course, when they're connecting and interacting with dApps, also making sure that there's warnings that pop up for those users. A big premise of what we wanna do within the space is make sure that we never block a user from actually taking an action, but what we wanna do is protect and inform that user so that they can make the most informed decision for themselves uh, while they're actually interacting with this ecosystem. Now you touched on this, but what other security measures is MetaMask taking to ensure users feel safe and secure? Yes, so uh, I think as we talked about before, right? There's no one silver bullet. So there's an entire life cycle that the user goes through in terms of interacting with this ecosystem. So we already had a series of uh, detections in place, albeit uh, not as strong as we would like. And so that's why we're taking a series of these new steps working with a company like Blockade. Um, but we're also making it so that uh, when that person does go in and look at the secret recovery phrase, they understand what the risks are there but we're also now starting to take some steps before they even connect to an application. Uh, they can get some risk profile that's associated with that application as well. And then uh, also when they're doing a transaction, we can be very clear in a human readable interface of what exactly is gonna be that outcome for the user in terms of what's gonna happen to their assets. And then the last part too that we're uh, working on is making sure that after the transaction actually happens, if they did on accident work or uh, interact with a malicious uh, smart contract or application, they can go back and revoke all of those uh, access controls that are actually there. And so if you go to uh, the MetaMask portfolio, 
there's a, a, an area that we call spending caps that can actually show you all of uh, what you've given in terms of allowances to all these different smart contracts and applications and go and manage that all in one location. So we do want to make sure that people are not allowing free reign to any application. And so we do want to make sure that while they're going through that, they are actually sitting in there and limiting uh, what access each of those applications have. And we give that control to the user as well as some recommendations for them. As we all know, when it comes to crypto wallets, certainly there are a lot of options out there. So how is your crypto wallet different from others from a security standpoint? Yeah, so I think uh, one thing that's really interesting is the fact that we are the largest wallet in the space. And so the way in which we approach some of these new functionality, while we may not be the first ones to release the functionality, we are spending a lot of upfront time to make sure that we're doing it in a scalable and secure manner. And so uh, a few different aspects of that is we did have the blockade uh, integration up and running, and we were actually running that for a series of months before we turn it on by default for everyone because we wanted to make sure that we were getting the outcomes that we actually expected and then we were protecting those users. The other part, too, is even in certain areas, say, like adding in the ability to bridge, a lot of, uh, a lot of competitors may just add that functionality by using a third party uh, that's out there. And what we end up doing is we spend the extra time and effort to write our own smart contracts to add additional protections on top of it. So there's been some recent hacks across bridges and none of our users were actually uh, came into risk with that because of the smart contracts that we put in place in front of that user interaction. So I think it goes back to security is extremely important to us. We certainly have some more work to do, um, but that is a core focus uh, over the next six months to really make sure that we have that end to end life cycle being covered. And so I think the scale that we have really helps us understand where all those different uh, points are and targets are so that we can protect our users from it. Now, earlier this month, Consensus announced that the crypto wallet MetaMask will now let users buy crypto through Robinhood, allowing those using the trading platform greater access to digital assets. So now that it has been a couple of weeks since the announcement, how is the integration going so far? And is it revealing a shift toward broader mainstream adoption? For sure. Yeah. And so uh, I think the integration with Robinhood has been great. The team has been great in terms of working with us. We've seen some great flows in terms of individuals moving from Robinhood to our self-custodial wallet of MetaMask and even those going back as well. And so one of the things that we really wanted to decrease is that barrier from custodial to self-custodial. And so you'll be seeing a few more uh, of those sort of integrations to help individuals who start in this custodial uh, ecosystem and then move to something like MetaMask to go and interact with the Web3 ecosystem. And so we're trying to make uh, that interaction a lot simpler so it does become uh, more mainstream for those users to leverage a tool that's right for them. So is the shift to broader adoption reflected in the number of your users? If so, break down the numbers for us. Yeah, of course. So uh, it's been uh, pretty amazing to see over the past few months. We've actually seen an increase of 10 million monthly active users. Uh, so moving from about 20 million to 30 million. Of course, not all of that data we certainly have because of our privacy preserving uh, stance. Um, but yeah, that, that increase has been really great to see in terms of people leveraging uh, the MetaMask wallet and then moving between these different ecosystems. We're, we're coming out uh, more into this bull market. Um, and this does definitely feel different than where we've been in the past. Uh, a lot of the infrastructure that is there today wasn't there before. And so we're, we're starting to see a lot more of those different use cases and what people are interacting with. And the way that they're using crypto has also changed over the past couple of years. And I actually read that this growth nearly matches the peak figures seen during the bull market in 2022. Uh, but on a general yeah. note, what do you think the industry as a whole should do to move toward mass adoption of crypto? What steps do you think should be taken? Yeah, so I, I'm a firm believer that the technology shouldn't just be used because it's just the new technology, right? It's here as a means to allow for people to do things that they couldn't do before. And so working on ways to abstract away the complexity that's associated with uh, the technology to make it so that every uh, day users can all of a sudden just do something that's brand new for them. And so I think we've been making a lot of steps to do that. We're not fully there yet, um, but even in some of the new decentralized say, social constructs, uh, individuals can go, they can use their standard email and sign in just like any web two, and they can interact uh, with individuals within that space. And they don't need to understand what chain they are, what token they're using, 
none of that. And they're able to leverage kind of the power and the value that's associated with the blockchain and the decentralized ecosystem. Now, in October, MetaMask was no longer available on the Apple App Store, but I see it's back now. So I'm wondering, yes. where does that stand right now? How long was it unavailable? And what did you think about that development when it first happened? Why did Apple make it unavailable to begin with? Yeah, so uh, I, it was only unavailable for a very short period of time. We got it back up and running, certainly worked with the Apple team to make sure that that happened. It had nothing to do with security. It didn't have anything to do with kind of Apple's uh, like sets or regulations that are associated with it. So it was a series of things on our side that we wanted to make sure we had in place uh, before getting it back up onto the store. So um, I think from that perspective, we all worked really well in terms of making sure that that happened and wanted to get it back up to our users as fast as possible. So certainly was a little bit of a hiccup uh, and making sure that that doesn't happen again. But it's been uh, it's been helpful in terms of having that communication between Apple and then, of course, we work closely with Google as well. And people shouldn't expect it to happen again type of thing. Correct. Got it. Now, MetaMask is a crypto wallet designed primarily for the Ethereum blockchain. So yes. I'm wondering what you're paying attention to as it pertains to Ethereum. Is the next big upgrade, which is expected to happen soon, something that's on your radar? Yeah, so we're really excited about the upgrade uh, that is coming. We call it the Duncan upgrade. It's uh, coming out shortly. Uh, the area that's really important for this is that it is improving uh, infrastructure for us and moving more towards uh, the speed and low cost of what we call layer twos. And so again, in, in terms of the differences between a couple of years ago to today, you now are able to interact with the ecosystem at a much uh, lower cost and a much higher speed. And so that we believe will again, bring on more of the masses uh, to interact in a lot of new use cases that are associated with it. And then of course, we are certainly very Ethereum focused, but we do now have a product that we call Snaps. And so there's something like 15 different non-EVM chains that we actually support through Snaps. And we're working on integrating those, uh, some of those directly within by default uh, for end users as well. So we do realize that this is a multi-chain world and we wanna make sure that MetaMask continues to be the most flexible wallet out there and can work with you wherever you wanna go. I understand Polygon is one of those chains. Are you able to disclose any others? Uh, so Polygon is is one of the EVM chains, and that's certainly one that we currently support today. And so any EVM, uh, you're able to leverage with MetaMask out of the box and by default. Uh, we do have a series of chains that we add additional functionality to. So we have kind of like a list of our top nine based off of the transactions that um, our users interact with. Uh, as a means to go and prioritize those and make sure that we have certain things like auto token detection, some of the security features, um, all of those and making sure like gas optimization is associated with it. Uh, but of course, with MetaMask, uh, because of the flexibility, you can leverage it with any UVM uh, chain that's out there. But some of the other chains that we do have, say Snaps for, are things like Bitcoin and Solana um, that you can go and leverage today. Now, MetaMask was developed by Consensus, so I'm wondering what's next for Consensus and MetaMask? What can people expect? Yeah, so I think uh, one of the big parts that we're, there's a few different areas that we're really focused on. Uh, one of those is, of course, increased flexibility. So the snaps, uh, which enable you to extend the functionality of MetaMask. So your MetaMask in a year versus my MetaMask in a year may look different depending on what's important to each of us and the way that we interact uh, within the ecosystem. I think the other area that we're really focused on as well is this new concept of like embeddable wallets and smart contract accounts. So this brings in a lot of that account abstraction that we were talking about is how do we abstract away the complexity of blockchain and make it much easier to end users. So there might be a future in which you're able to interact with an application and you actually don't need to download an extension or a mobile. And you can onboard directly to that application and then move your pass keys around between different devices. And that for us makes it a lot simpler for individuals to pick up and to use. And they don't have to make all those choices that they have to today in terms of using, say, like that extension. And so those are some of the key areas that we're really focused on. And then, of course, we're going to continue to always focus on the core of the product and, again, protect our users throughout that entire life cycle and really make sure that we're making MetaMask as easy to use as possible when people uh, onboard.